Good morning, my soccer universe. All semifinals are set. It's actually that I'm driving now today. I don't have to bring the kids, so I can already start from home. And honestly, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. I am for the first time this year all short sleeves. Still a little bit fresh in the morning. It's gonna get very warm very soon. Today I was really, I mean, you probably know already the semifinals. Uh, I have jerseys of three of the four semi-finalists and I was really fidgeting today as I thought it's not how, how, how to say it's not that good that I have that many jerseys because <laughs> there's so much choice uh, but yeah we have the, the two London teams went on both of which jerseys I have and we have Valencia moving on that's why I'm wearing my Valencia jersey although they didn't play in anything of an away jersey but I just love this one um, and we also talked that Frankfurt moved on against Benfica that was probably the big game in in the sense that that, that that was the one where there was still some suspense all the others were kind of blah um, but yeah I thought then yesterday I was wearing Spurs I cannot incredibly wear Arsenal and Chelsea but I also have been wearing this Valencia shirt I, it's always become my Friday look but then again any excuse to wear this shirt I absolutely love it so maybe uh, there's a good reason of doing it so let's get to the games. Uh, let's quickly get the two not so exciting ones out of the way. Uh, any hope that Napoli had against Arsenal uh, was squashed early, uh, late in the first half. Uh, the game started quite open. Napoli had even a few chances uh, that maybe one of those you should take. They made a goal which was rightly ruled out by the side you know this does happen from time to time and then Arsenal gets a free kick Lacazette puts it in but it was mostly because the goalkeeper speculated that the ball will go over the wall <laughs> he has a and the ball goes freely in this was in my in my, my opinion a goalkeeping mistake if if you have a wall, you need to trust that friggin' wall. Uh, you have to guard the other net. I'm sorry to say this. Uh, this was a very bad goalkeeping mistake. And then I think Napoli scored another offside goal, but that was that. And probably Arsenal was closer to making it uh, 2 0 in a way. Played it safely home. And yeah, a 3 0 against Napoli. Sounds very impressive. I have to say that Napoli season dovetailed considerably after they lost to Juve at home. I think from then on, Napoli kind of lost their mojo, and mainly because everything there was nothing left really to play for 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 them except for the Europa League. But that was um, that's also it's always hard to kind of in Serie A you don't have to play it full, and then uh, in the Europa League you have to play for not even there I mean they disposed of Salzburg in the first leg where they I think uh, that was the last time that they showed that they're really really strong side uh, that they got outdone by Arsenal is a little bit disappointing uh, for me for the reason because they were hanging in there with Liverpool and PSG really the cream of the crop they could have easily made it out of this group stage but uh, it was really down to form if Napoli plays to form they are probably one of the two best teams left in the champ uh, in the Europa League probably would have been a strong contender for a quarter-final in the Champions League as well but uh, this way Unfortunately, uh, it ends in disappointment. Una Emery, though, I mean, those were this was a match of two coaches that are really uh, very successful in Europe with Una Emery and uh, is at Sevilla and you know, Angelotti winning uh, three Champions Leagues. So, in that sense, it was an in in interesting matchup that Una Emery thoroughly won and deservedly so. Again, the jersey matchup left something for me to be desired um, yes this time both teams were in the first jerseys as I already said uh, 
but Arsenal in all red looked weird. Uh, looked absolutely weird to me. Uh, it looked like more like a Bayern Munich kit. Uh, so yeah, I think Arsenal could have either played, either let Napoli play in all blue and Arsenal then plays in the first choice kit, which they should have done already in London. Or if that doesn't uh, work, uh, then take out the Navy away kit, I think. It's again, I don't like that uh, FIFA and UEFA are so picky with uh, not the same colors. I think if Arsenal would have played in their Navy and red, this would have worked quite well. I'm sorry again, the sun is deep and uh, has a lot of light and shade going on. I already spent too much time on that. Uh, the other one, Valencia, and those two play against each other. Uh, Valencia got an early goal, which was kind of a little bit messy through uh, Lato. And I have not really heard of Lato before, I gotta admit. Uh, I think the ball came from Guedes, who has been in a uh, really great form as of late. But uh, Lato puts it in, it was a little bit of a scrappy goal. What I was hoping when I heard La Lato is that he's kind of related to the uh, big Polish forward from the 70s and 80s, which he was not because he's a Spaniard. So, yeah. And then, uh, second time, I mean, Valencia then really did only minimal effort, absolutely minimal effort um, to get this whole. They have a free kick by Pareja in the second half because it's like an in. There was really nothing uh, going to Villarreal. Villarreal only had uh, real chances once it was 2 0. So yeah, Valencia Arsenal. That sounds to be, sounds to me like a really interesting matchup. Um, I would give Arsenal the uh, edge in terms of who's fav favorite and who's not, but I think this is a pretty even matchup. So you know, look forward to that one. Um, then Chelsea against Slavia Prague. That was similar to the, similar, not in terms of drama, but in terms of goal scoring, to uh, the City Spurs game uh, yesterday, which we also gonna see on Saturday. <laughs> I won't see it, uh, because uh, it's Easter and we're gonna meet family. So that's a little bit of a downer, but uh, who thinks that this is gonna be as great? I actually have some slight hope that uh, Spurs uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get some, something from it, but on the other other side, City will be angry and they will hammer Spurs. That's that's more likely of what uh, what what's gonna happen there. Anyway, uh, we are back to Chelsea against Slavia. Lots of goals early on. Uh, Pedro in probably the best goal of the evening, although there is another contender there. Uh, Many one twos, I think, with Giroud, and pro 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 probably an, a, another player. From the corner flag to the edge of the box, back into the goal, was really nicely played. I love uh, those passing moves when they can happen so smoothly. Um, that made it uh, 1 0 for Chelsea, I think, already the third or fourth minute. Uh, the 2 0 happened quickly thereafter. Uh, again, Pedro was involved, uh, was a cross in. Pedro puts it on the on the post from the post it bounces to the Slavia defender and into internet PDR goal one of those that you will see in highlights and bloopers of soccer probably for a while now. Uh, 3-0 Giroud I think was also in the 17th minute or something so it was not as frantic as the City Spurs game. Uh, Giroud makes it 3-0 again from a pass of Pedro, who was clearly the man of the first half. Slavia then uh, puts one back, I think it was Suchek. I don't, I don't, honestly, I, I don't remember those names and I'm very sorry because I actually the Slavia run really felt very inspiring and I was quite happy, happy to see Slavia going that far. And nice jersey went to again. Uh, but yeah. Uh, corner kick straight in. This was uh, one that they practiced that way. Uh, 
worked to perfection. A minute later, Pedro makes it 4 1, and the tie is more or less over. I mean, it was for us already over at 3 0. Uh, you could see that Chelsea was scoring at will and they took it a little bit easier. Right after the gate in the second half, Slavia puts one back. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. I don't. The same, uh, a different player. Uh, with a, a wide range shot that kind of got in the short corner, but it was really, really hard to see for um, Kepa. Five minutes later, same player, a thunderous shot into the corner. It's 4 3. Slavia is only two goals away of advancing. And uh, kudos to Slavia. I mean, it was a little bit of a suicide command that they did uh, in the first half, not hiding, uh, but really playing it out and letting. Uh, you know, trying to play with Chelsea, which obviously didn't work, but um, they got three goals at Stamford Bridge and there were many fans there. Uh, that was what actually surprised me most and actually felt pretty cool that there were so many Slavia fans there. They were celebrating every little goal uh, and their team that actually could make it to the quarterfinals. It was, it was really refreshing to see. And yeah, they also played in the nice, I said already, nice touring jersey, which but it ended at 4-3, there was not much coming there, so Chelsea also, I don't want to say cruising, but I always felt that they could find another gear if they needed to. They are through to the semi-finals and that leaves Benfica against Frankfurt, which was a super odd game. In the sense that Benfica actually, it reminded me a little bit about Juve Atletico. Uh, they had the feeling Frankfurt is trying, but Benfica is hanging back there and just trying to control and calm the game down, which they did actually a pretty good overall job in. Uh, it was not that there was really much happening for Frankfurt, uh, and then something did happen. Uh, shot hit the post, and Kostic puts it into the net. Never mind. Three when the shot was taken, three Frankfurt players clearly, clearly offside. That goal never should have stood, but it stood. Of course, lots of uh, discussions. I mean, it was very quickly known that this was an offside goal. On the Befica bench, the uh, coach got ape shit and was sent off into the stands. At first, he, he, he was sitting all among Frankfurt fans. That was maybe a little bit odd, and then he got his own spot, I think, in the press box. But yeah. Uh, that was unlucky. In the second half, Benfica actually uh, came out a little bit uh, and Joao Felic again uh, caused some mayhem but it didn't go in and uh, but uh, there was also not too much coming from Frankfurt. I mean, I again, I watched all of the conference between all four teams, uh, all four games and while you always had the feeling that Frankfurt could do something, uh, it was not so clear that there will be much done. Uh, Frankfurt really just uh, tried, but Benfica defended quite smartly overall. Until uh, uh, Kevin Trapp uh, kick, long kick goes uh, near to the uh, Benfica box. And Benfica just cannot get the ball away and then uh, I think it was Rebic who placed the ball uh, to the side and Rode takes a shot and it goes into net 2-0 Frankfurt. And all you can say is it seemed like it was a lucky 2-0. Uh, um, at least I had the feeling and not especially, especially that offside goal, uh, it doesn't doesn't feel good, honestly, that uh, Frank Frankfurt went up by two, uh, by two goals to nil. Anyway, um, Benfica tried, they hit the post, uh, but ultimately they lulled themselves too much in order to get something real going. I was slightly hoping that Benfica really can get the goal um, that they will deserve uh, simply for the fact that I. I mean, if Frankfurt will have made it 3-1, then uh, fine. But I just didn't feel, I just didn't feel it right that uh, that goal should have cancelled been 
cancelled. Okay, okay, that's the only one. Yeah, I only can say it that way. But yeah, um, Benfica is eliminated, probably even as the better team. I mean, they thoroughly dominated Frankfurt in Lisbon. And yesterday they were just, you know, it's the one thing. If it goes well, then you say this is a routine performance. If it doesn't go well, then you were just too passive. Um, it's surely hurt. That I can say. If I was a Benfica fan, uh, that one would surely hurt. I, I surely can say that. But hey, that's how it ended. 2-0 uh, Frankfurt. And that was the one game uh, that went not as predicted. Because I really thought the Benfica will. They were so... Uh, so dominant in the first, first leg that I couldn't really imagine them not moving on. But yeah, Frankfurt gets the turnaround. Frankfurt is in the semi final. And to me, the last time that Frankfurt was in the quarterfinals of a European competition, they played Salzburg. That was in 94. And a certain Adi Hütter scored at a goal against Frankfurt to make it a 1-0 for Frankfurt in Austria and then Frankfurt won the other the return leg but uh, lost on penalties and now exactly this Adi Hütter uh, makes puts Frankfurt into the next round I thought there is a slight irony in there and shows you that things come back to you uh, somehow in your life that a person that actually didn't do something good, suddenly does something good for you. And it happens not that rarely. So that to me is was the kind of thing that I thought that's interesting. I mean I also thought that uh, um, that Frankfurt hired Adi Hütter uh, was interesting, but I think uh, his style of play fits very well uh, with Frankfurt it, you know also this high press so typically in a way the the Red Bull play uh, and it's really funny that you actually can identify this high press that you know also Klopp and so on has but a red, uh, when once uh, Red Bull hired Rangnick as their overall um, overs you know sporting director and now he's only at Leipzig blah 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 well in Salzburg and he still has a big effect on those teams. They all play as this similar high press, high intensity style um, that I I think this, this, this is what, what I associate with them, although maybe it should be also associated with um, what Klopp has been doing and uh, all his life. But it's Klopp and Rangnick uh, to me that are the fathers of that style and Germany uh, tried to play that to a certain extent too. But yeah, we have Chelsea against Frankfurt. I think it's clear who's the favorite. I think this should be, this should be all Chelsea to be honest, but uh, you never know where this is going. Uh, Frankfurt is one of those teams that can really surprise uh, you uh, if you're not ready uh, to play their game. Uh, they have a good goalkeeper, they have a lively front. Um, I think they, they are a dangerous team, but I think that overall Chelsea is that much better. And we're looking at an all London final in Baku. And given that Spurs has a decent chance, a much better chance than they probably would have had if I could have advanced. There could be three London teams in a European final this year. Just take that. Um, I find this hugely intriguing. Um, I honestly think I think it will be Valencia against uh, Chelsea in the final. But else than Arsenal is the favorite. But we'll see. Uh, Una Emery has been surprising me in many regards. Uh, with his performance of Arsenal because they should have gone out to Rennes already, which they didn't. Uh, so their home form will carry them through 
probably and now it will be interesting you know Emery knows Valencia very well it will be very interesting to see him play against Valencia and I think Chelsea against Frankfurt uh, I think will be a little bit the more offensive uh, game and so that's gonna be fun to watch too I hope um, probably not as much fun as I expect Spurs against Ajax that I just imagine to be super super fun We'll see. Well, let Lad know what you watched, whether you agree with my assessments uh, of the games that I watched yesterday. I know um, there were times uh, not too long ago where the Europa League felt uh, the more exciting competition. This time around, I would disagree. I think a Champions League was not two years in a row, the quarterfinals. Uh, really, really exciting. Uh, last year, maybe even more so than this year. Uh, and the Europa League was okay, was okay, but not uh, as great. I, th I, ac I actually enjoyed the Europa League more during the group stages uh, and the early rounds of the knockout stage when there were really many games and you always had something happening. Um, now it's kind of you see that there are good teams in there, uh, big names, and if you're Arsenal or Chelsea fan or Valencia fan, Frankfurt fan, I mean, give it to the Frankfurt fans. Uh, they are not only traveling every, every, everywhere, but also they're supported at home. Uh, I actually found fun for funny, funny. Let me finish there. So if, he, if you're a fan of these teams, I think you will thoroughly enjoy the Europa League. Uh, last thing on the Frankfurt fans. Uh, they tried to storm the pitch, but you could actually see that they wanted to... Uh, they got close to, 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 the, to the pitch, but just not there. And uh, they actually um, spilled over the commercial uh, bands that are there. Uh, they uh, toppled them, but then they remained there. Uh, seemingly, yeah, if we storm the, the pitch, this is gonna be uh, fine for Frankfurt that we don't want. That was interesting to see. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.